Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about music and machines. Um, about, first of all, my name is Adam Sadowski. I'm the president of Sin Labs. There's a, quite a few Sin Labs guys in the house, right? Can I can I hear for Sin Labs? Right on. Thanks. So I'm talking about music and machines, not instruments necessarily, but the use of machines in music videos. Um, of course, you guys are all familiar with this. If you're not, you've been living under a rock. 50 million plus views on YouTube. OK Go, dancing on treadmills. And so when they approached us about a project that they had in mind, they wanted to, uh, they wanted to, <laughs> they wanted to build a Rube Goldberg machine for their next uh, video. Um, we were, we were of course a little overwhelmed. Um, I mean, it's it's a really exciting project, um, um, but we were really excited about it. You guys were all familiar with Rube Goldberg machines, right? And anybody not familiar with the Rube Goldberg machine, most complicated way to do a simple thing, right? Well, they didn't have really a specific requirement, but they did have some some broad requirements. Uh, that is, uh, yeah, no magic. Everything had to be sort of understandable by my mom, or your mom, for that matter. Um, the machine had to start the music. So that is, the machine starts before the video, or you know, before the music part of the video starts. And of course, the machine feeling should follow along with the feeling of the song. Relatively straightforward so far. But they had more. <sighs> Moving on. All right, they wanted it messy. Fair enough. They wanted band integration. Also, uh, totally cool, but they, they were specific in that they wanted the machine to act on the band and not the other way around. And they wanted that the machine would play part of the song. That is, during playback of the video, they want the audio to drop out and the recording of the machine to actually be playing part of the song. Okay, it's getting a little more complicated now. They also wanted it synced to the rhythm and hitting very specific beats in the song. Um, that starts adding some layers of complexity. And they wanted it to end precisely on time. So now we've got a three and a half minute song that has to start at, at an exact moment, hit specific beats throughout, and end at the exactly right moment. Oh, and it had to move between two floors of a 10,000 square foot warehouse. <laughs> and there's one more requirement, and this was the jaw dropper. And that was, wait for it. Right, I'm just gonna leave that one up there and let that soak in. Yeah, so they wanted it in one shot. Okay, right, so we started this in August and, um, and um, we, uh, we actually shot it. Um, successfully, I'm, I'm proud to say, uh, in the early part of this month. And um, what we've learned, let's talk about a little bit what we learned. We learned that uh, small stuff sucks. Uh, the noise involved in the small aberrations of little stuff, glass marbles and little tracks, just stinks. It's just incredibly hard. Um, so we put the reliable stuff last. That was one of the things we learned. Um, uh, of course, you know, that cuts down on reset times, which were the real killer. Uh, a whole reset of the entire machine took a, an hour. We only had, uh, initially we only had one shooting day, so we really had to get it going fast. Planning is incredibly important with something like this. Like I said, we started in August, and um, there's, there's a lot of planning involved, but planning, you know, doesn't work, it turns out. So <laughs> we, got, we got screwed on that deal. But um, uh, uh, probably, uh, I would say, we lost far more of the machine to changes than, um, we, uh, uh, that than survived through the whole uh, process. To give you an example, this is our floor plan uh, as we sort of ideated it uh, a couple of months ago, as recently as a couple of months ago. The blue line is the path of the camera. The red, if you can see, the colors is sort of the path of the machine, uh, delineated by it sort of roughly in the segments of the machine. This is sort of how it started to come into focus. Um, this was the, the last, I think, official diagram that we drew of it um, before we shot. And it ended up being uh, radically different in many ways than, in fact, even we had planned as, as recently as two weeks before the shoot. Um, you can see top is a section we've got. We had book dominoes. The bottom, all sorts of crazy shit that was Actually, we had a machine that was sort of the, a piece of the machine that was the crazy shit section. Um, and that entire table, 17 seconds of machine, got scrapped uh, with a week to go. 
and we replaced it with another one. So this is a, a picture of the uh, looking, I guess we're in the uh, southwest corner looking northeast. You can see sort of the elevator structure there um, that you, we used to lower the uh, cameraman and camera down. Um, you can see there's a flag fanfare happening there. That's done by rat traps. Uh, with 42-inch flags of our own creation. Some amazing builders on this project. Some of them are in the room, by the way. Um, and um, we went through some expendables, by the way. We went through, I don't know, about a dozen TVs. We went through two pianos, uh, a thousand ping pong balls. Um, so you can see the Chinese soup spoons. This is one of the sort of fiddlier bits that actually uh, remained in the machine, but it's very early on in the process. Um, and um, uh, we managed to make it work. This is the tire. This is a very a sort of significant milestone. It's, it occurs very early in the song, but if we made it past the tire, we were probably good for a full take, or at least very close to it. Um, and, and that's because this is where the stuff starts getting big enough that we can sort of manage it. Um, you'll, you'll see the tire in an early, uh, because we're going to show you the video. Um, all right, we played a little bit with scale, too. So you can see we had the smaller version of the, of the car in the early stuff, up, and then downstairs we had the full-size version in the make livery. Notice the matching uh, dorsal fins. Uh, these are the band members on shoot day, uh, fingers crossed, hoping that it was going to happen. And then, the, uh, of course, the cheering for the tire actually uh, rolling, which was great. Uh, this was our catchphrase, by the way. It was the name of the song, of course, This Two Shall Pass, but after 20 18-hour days in a row, um, we, were, we were saying it to each other an awful lot. Um, and I think that that is our cue to roll the video. Okay. 